Hi, my name is Matt Brown and I'm a solutions architect at Squid. In this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about the Actions Framework. I'm looking at my list of pages in the Squid app in Salesforce, and I'm gonna to go to a page that I've already created called Account List with Detail. If I click on this, it'll open it in the Composer. And if we look at the page, we'll see I've already set up uh, my data layer. I have a model that connects to the accounts object, and then I'm displaying that data layer in my visual layer using a component, a squid table. Now in the table properties, um, we, we can see down at the bottom here in the canvas, I have row actions, global actions, and mass actions. This allows me to um, add things that the user can interact with. That gives us an actions layer. That's the third layer of the application. And that's what takes us from having a static page uh, to being a dynamic user experience. We're gonna add a pretty common UX pattern here, uh, which is the ability for the user to go from a list uh, into some details on a record that, that is shown inside a pop-up. And so uh, in the bottom left, I'm gonna click the plus icon to add a row action. Uh, it'll add it and it'll auto focus it. Uh, so I now can see those action properties in my properties pane up here in the top right. Uh, there's a few different action types. We're gonna select run multiple actions and we'll relabel it to say open account details. And we'll pick a better icon um, that is uh, a little bit more obvious to the user. I'm gonna pick the open folder icon there. And because we're running multiple actions, we have a tab in our properties over here on the right that says actions, and if I click on that, we can see uh, a place where we can add a sequence of actions that's gonna run when the user clicks on this icon. So I'll add a few. Um, you can see when I add an action, the default is save model changes, but we can change that uh, to many different types of actions that are available, um, from visual navigation actions to uh, data changes to advanced things like running a JavaScript snicket, snippet. I'm gonna go ahead and click um, show message and block UI, which lets the user know that something is happening behind the scenes. I'll say, please wait, and we'll have it time out after 1.5 seconds. The second thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to show a pop-up. And when I select show pop-up, I now have an option to configure that pop-up by clicking on this button right underneath. That gives me a container that can hold other components. So let's go up to our components library here. I'm gonna grab a field editor component, which is good for showing data from an individual record. And I'll put it in the drop zone there. We can see it gives us two columns with a section in each. Um, and if I click on the section, I can add my fields right in here. Let's go ahead and get name, type, created date, industry, and description. And I can move these fields around to make it more readable um, and easier for the end user. This use case is really helpful if you have a table that uh, you only wanna display 10 columns on, uh, but then being able to drill in and see a pop-up with more fields uh, than are displayed in the table can be, can be really helpful for the end user. Let's go ahead and hit save and click the preview button in the composer to see what this looks like. There's our table, and now over here on the left we have a row action that we can click on which will then give us a pop-up with more information about that account. So that's a little bit about the actions framework and a few actions that you can do to get started. I hope this was helpful. Um, thanks so much for watching.